the Lord led Jeremiah to repentance. Therefore this is what the Lord says, If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 19 through 21. So being hammered by the world and the ruler of this world to the point where we despair of life is a natural thing for those of us who have chosen to look at the world through the lens of truth and see that there is nothing here worthwhile apart from God. When we experience severe pressure on top of this correct mindset, it is very easy for us, perhaps the most natural thing, to want to be free of this world entirely. It is at such times when we are emotionally at our weakest that the strength and power of God takes over. It is only when we are truly weak that we can fully experience God's strength. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surprisingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 6 through 10. In the early going of the Christian life, God may need to give us more hints on how to respond, for example through the intervention of fellow Christians, to name but one possibility. But with the coming of maturity, battle experience in this conflict in which we are engaged, we learn to encourage ourselves in Him right from the start of such assaults, remembering why we are here and whom we are here for. When we do, the fact that this world is nothing apart from the role we play in the Lord's plan is actually an incredible source of strength into which we learn to tap. We have learned not to love the world but to hate it and to hate our lives in it, for we have been crucified to it and it to us. That is the point at which we begin to experience the joy of Him and His truth to the full. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 20 Unlike the rest of the world which is entirely engaged in pointless vanity, we believers know of a certainty that everything we do for Jesus Christ will live forever, that He is keeping our deposit secure for us in heaven, and that the day of reunion with Him will come soon enough, when and how He wills it. For all of us who have already lost our lives and so gained them, living is Jesus Christ and dying is gain. Therefore we have the courage and the grace and the confidence to soldier on, even and especially when we are at our weakest point, because we have learned to trust in Him. Therefore let all those who are suffering according to the will of God entrust their lives while doing what is good to a Creator who is faithful. 1 Peter 4.19 Christians who are really serious about getting close to and serving Jesus Christ are a true threat to the devil indeed, but at the same time, spiritual growth and a closer relationship to our Lord is a guarantee that He will help us on our journey through this satanic world system, preparing and equipping us to respond to His good work.